and welcome to this new session where we are going to look at the risk factors and causes of cancer in relation to the environmental factors. So let us begin. Let us look at the causes and the risk factors in their respective categories one by one. And uh, like I showed you, we are going to keep on also uh, focusing on genetics as well. All the environmental factors that we are going to look at, we are going still to remain focusing, uh, we are going to remain um, also uh, bringing in genetics as well. Because each and everything rotates mainly about genetics as the center, as the focal point, and as far as the carcinogenesis and the cancer development is concerned. I'm ready to, for now I can put a tick. Now let's see, focus our attention on environmental factors. So we have our environmental, our environmental factors. So let's first let's look at the uh, categories. Category number one. We are going to uh, let's use. Uh, Roman numerals. Oh, let's uh, let's uh, use uh, alphabet. Category A, we have the foods. Uh, foods uh, that we take in. B, we have. Infections, C, we have ionizing radiations, that we commonly adopt I think and also actually uh, some medications Medications plus chemicals exposed to our bodies. So under these foods, which foods predispose us to cancers? Let's first look at the foods that predispose us 
to cancers. Which foods do contain carcinogens? Carcinogens are substances, are chemical substances that usually induce cancers when they come into contact with our body cells. When they come into contact with our body cells for a long period of time, when there is chronicity, when there is a repeated exposure, we end up with cancers. So, uh, let me begin with under the foods that you commonly consume. Within the foods, we are now tackling A, uh, the category A, under environmental factors, we have the foods. And within the foods, within some foods, not, however, not in, uh, not in all the foods, uh, we have, for example, uh, the betel nuts, betel nuts. These ones have some carcinogens. Then we have uh, aflatoxins. What are aflatoxins? Aflatoxins are also referred to as flavotoxins. Uh, these ones, actually, the common, uh, the common member of the common culprit of the family uh, is called the aflatoxin B1 is the most, uh, carcino, carc, carc, is the one which is highly carcinogenic in the category of these chemicals uh, that we ingest along with food. Now, what are aflatoxins? Aflatoxins are chemicals uh, that uh, are produced by uh, a certain morod, you know morods, It comes from a morod. You know morods are under fungi, they are under fungi or fungus. When we, when, when we, use, when we use singularity, uh, we say fungus. So we have morods. So there is a, a morod that is called the aspergillus, aspergillus fravus. Aspergillus flavus is the one, it is a morod, a morod or a fungus that is responsible for the production of aflatoxins, where aflatoxin B1 category is part and parcel of the, the group. So, uh, where does this aspergillus flavus, uh, where does it come into contact with our food? How does it end up in our food? You know, uh, we, after harvesting our foods in most cases, especially the ground nuts, the gin nuts, uh, the cashew nuts, uh, rhizum, I mean, uh, cereals like maybe maize, uh, uh, sorghum, all those cereals and the rhizums that we always consume, even peas, sometimes we harvest cow peas and we first put in our storage facilities, in our homes, uh, in our national stores, like that. Now, if with the foods, let me also write, we have our cereals like maize grains, soga or maize, or corn, sorghum, wheat, rice, all these are cereals. All these are cereals that we are talking about. Then we have, uh, we have the regions. We have also uh, the regions. Examples we have uh, ground nuts. We have uh, peas. Beans, etc. So, commonly in our villages, in our communities, uh, following after the harvesting seasons, uh, we usually get uh, our food, our, our food crops, and uh, after maybe winnowing them, after processing them and winnowing, uh, we put in our storage facilities 
Uh, those days when we were still growing up, when we were still uh, little boys and girls, I remember we used to have uh, in many homes, most in many homes in our villages and communities, uh, we used to have granaries. Uh, but these days, uh, I don't know what is happening. I think the culture is being abandoned, maybe because of modernity. I remember I would go and I uh, would uh, uh, store some of these regimes and the cereals uh, in various compartments in different granaries. And uh, they would do, uh, another season would come and find uh, them there when we are still eating. And in the process, we would not actually, would be protected from famine, from, uh, from hunger, I remember. Now, all those were examples of, all those examples of uh, storage facilities. Then some people also stored directly in the rooms, they lay collect in bags and they, they pour actually the produce there, or they harvest there, and they keep it there. So if it so happens that we store any of these products, any of these food crops, the, the, the cereals and the legumes, and we store them in moist, cold and moist environments, cold and moist rooms, we end up, uh, we end up with moisture, uh, 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 we end up with the moist regions, we end up with the moist cereals. So when moisture is, when that coldness remains and the, the moisture remains uh, in the end, uh, our morals, called the Aspergillus bravus species, end up colonizing our grains here, our cereals, and our stored legumes. And eventually, uh, when we start consuming them, you, of course, before that, uh, our, let alone we see our spagulous bravus or our morals uh, producing as they are colonizing them, like they will receive a blood. When blood is, when blood reaches, actually, uh, when blood surpasses its shelf life, you know what happens to that kind of bread. When it burns, it will surpass their shelf life. It means they can no longer be consumed. They start getting bad. They start actually developing some morals, uh, some fungi. Uh, like, of course, you know, when we keep blade there, uh, blade with this, that has been sliced, when you keep posho, when you keep mandazi, buns, all those products, uh, all those wheat products, and we keep them, and instead of consuming them in time, and we delay to touch them, and eventually they go bad, they surpass their shelf life. We see uh, various grayish things uh, growing onto that bread, growing onto that mandaz, growing on, uh, uh, on uh, those buns. And uh, uh, when you see such grayish, grayish uh, substance growing on it, those are examples of the morals that I'm talking about. So likewise, such morals also grow on our cereals and on our region. They grow on our grains and on our stored grains. And eventually, when we start consuming them, uh, you find that we are consuming, of course, you find that is well, they are roasted in one way or the other, but again, the aflatoxins, the, their products, the toxins that we are produced by the morals, remain very, very potent and active. So with the time, for example, we, shall, we find ourselves getting these ground nuts with the morals, we dry them, we take them to, or sometimes we first roast them, or sometimes we even simply take them to the grinding machine, the general grinding machine. We grind them, we use them uh, to make a sauce, uh, sauce of course for consumption. Uh, maybe we mix it with the silver fish or, or green vegetables. You know, they will cook our, they will prepare our, our ginat sauce. Uh, sometimes it can be even plain ginat sauce with some tomatoes and onions. And eventually, we prepare the sauce. But the sauce which has already aflatoxins. If uh, indeed, if it is maize flour, we take our grains, we maybe first dry them, but with the already the morals and aflatoxins produced, we take them to the grinding machine. We start taking that posho uh, with the aflatoxins. We start taking porridge, eating that porridge with the aflatoxins. Uh, eventually, uh, the cumulative effect, the aflatoxins keep on accumulating. It can be beans, it can be peas, it can be granuts, it can be our maize grains or corn, it can be on our sorghum, it can be on our wheat, it can be on our rice. 
So all these are susceptible uh, to being invaded by the morals called the Aspergillus ravus, which produces the toxin. Then eventually we keep on eating uh, those products like that, like that. Then eventually we end up with the uh, aflatoxins uh, 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 becoming sufficient, becoming high in our blood, and eventually they start the process of carcinogenesis. So when we say, when we, uh, we talk about uh, uh, these chemicals, these uh, aflatoxins, we are referring to carcinogens. So, a carcinogen a carcinogen is a chemical that induces cancer that stimulates the cells to become cancerous. A carcinogen a carcinogen a carcinogen is a chemical in a substance that stimulates the, uh, the, the recurrent or persistent growth and regenerated growth of cells uh, to become cancerous. To become cancerous. So any substance, any chemical substance that stimulates our body cells to undergo and regenerated cell division are referred to as uh, carcinogens. And the carcinogens are cancer inducers. So here we are. So at this chapter of aflatoxins, we are done. Better nuts, they are eaten, but still they have, uh, they are consumed, but they have also carcinogenic activity. So under this chapter of carcinogens, uh, I hope uh, we have uh, all understood. So what do aflatoxins do? Our aflatoxins, in the end, you know, these days we have uh, a high prevalence of uh, uh, of uh, actually hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. So, aflatoxins like aflatoxin B uh, causes induces uh, uh, hepato causes hepatocellular carcinoma, which is abbreviated as HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. So you can see from the foods that we eat, our own foods, our common foods that we consume, you can see the, the, if we are not careful, uh, what they can do, what they can cause to us. For example, uh, we have government bodies like Uganda National Bureau of Standards. That one is responsible uh, to keep on investigating all the foods that we consume on the market, that are on the market, uh, among the things that, among the, uh, the properties that they look for, among the things that they look for when they are investigating and analyzing foods within their laboratories, uh, both foods that are produced within our nation and also from uh, that, the, the, both the ones that are produced by us um, and also those ones that are imported. All those, all those foods must be analyzed by Uganda National Bureau of Standards, UNEBS. That is their role, that is one of their roles uh, to ensure that we are all safe. When they get maize fra, they take it to their analytical laboratories and they look for their aflatoxins. When they get it, when they are genus, they do the same. Uh, before, when anything, even sugar, everything, they, look, they don't only stop at looking for aflatoxins, but also they look for other chemicals. Uh, when you look at the United States, they have FDA, Food, uh, Food and Drug Administration. It is a body that is also responsible for doing all that job to ensure that the population of the, the population of the United States and the world are safe from actually uh, such disasters. So uh, when you hear FDA of the U.S., when you hear uh, our UNBS, that is their role to ensure that we are all safe. So this is what happens. So aflatoxins eventually they keep on uh, stimulating the hepatocytes of the river or the river cells. And eventually, well, the end result is hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. So in, this, in this, these days, when you, when you keep on hearing that, oh, the, the, cancer, the liver cancer cases are increasing year by year, 
you need to know these are the reasons. Therefore, my advice at this point, at this moment, is to advise us in as far as eating is concerned, our nutritional habits. We need to keep on noting that it is not always good, it is not good to consume ground nuts today, uh, to ground nut sauce today, tomorrow the same sauce, the other day the same sauce, uh, like that, like that. That's why it is always advisable that even when you have consumed that sauce, we need to be having green vegetables with anti antioxidants like vitamin C, we take fruits like that, so that, so that those antioxidants are able actually to protect, to protect the phototoxins from damaging the DNA of the hepatocytes like that. So uh, that's why it is not, we need to, if, if I eat uh, Gina, today is uh, a Monday. So being a Monday, if I have consumed Gina sauce, again, it is uh, actually, it is safer if I again consume Gina sauce, maybe like uh, on Saturday or Sunday, towards the end of the week, like twice in a week. Then also, um, uh, we have simu simu paste, uh, simu simu mixed with the uh, ginat. You know, it makes a nice chipori. It makes a nice sauce for us. Uh, we consume it using bread. Uh, on bread, it is nice, it is delicious. When you consume it on cassava, it is delicious. So, uh, you know, much as those foods of ours are very, very delicious, uh, we like uh, pleasing our tongue. We follow the, uh, the command of the tongue. Uh, the taste, the umami taste, delicious. However, we need to always be very, very careful when we are consuming such food. So we should always bear this, all this in mind, in our minds. So my dear colleagues, let us still under food, let us also uh, look at other uh, things that uh, cause us uh, troubles. Still, arukaho is under food, yes. Let me say this time more. Oh, uh, the drinks. Let me say that it drinks. And the drink, which drink am I talking about? The drink that I'm going to talk about here is alcohol. We have our alcohol. Especially, especially ethanol. What I do? We have our ethanol, we have our water here. So, in ethanol, in water Actually, not only all the, all the alcoholic drinks, actually, it's not only water, but here, I'll give you a common example. All alcohol, yes, when we take alcohol in, in raw amounts, in normal levels, we shall we remain safe. But again, when, we, when it becomes a habit, and we keep on abusing it every time, and we keep on taking large volumes, binge amounts, and we keep on drinking our heads off every now and then, every day, Eventually, uh, uh, we end up with uh, some types of cancers. It can be uh, oral cancer or carcinoma of the mouth. It can be uh, uh, pharyngeal carcinoma. It can be esophageal carcinoma or cancer. It can be uh, stomach cancer. It can be intestinal cancer. Anything can happen with the, with the alcohol. So now, in alcohol, when you take any form of alcohol from ethanol to various beers, uh, various spirits, I forgot to mention the spirits still under here. But uh, I will not, I will not uh, keep on giving you those brands of uh, the ethanols, uh, the brands of uh, spirits that we like consuming, because uh, you might think that I am um, uh, 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 tarnishing and destroying the market. Therefore, we are all adults. We know that alcohol, when we consume alcohol in excess, it is harmful, to, it becomes automatically harmful to our area. Though, so at this point, my dear colleagues, and uh, to, uh, the, to the whole world, I am not going to give examples of those alcohols and the spirits because it can be actually uh, destructive to the market. Uh, however, we are all adults, we know, and we are above 18, we make informed, we drink, 
are basing on informed decisions. Therefore, uh, ethanols, the warages, uh, alcohols in the form of ethanol, in the form of uh, spirits, uh, they end up in our bodies. And when they end up in our bodies, they, are, they must undergo metabolism. The liver and the other tissues, the liver mainly and together with the other body organs and tissues, they keep on carrying out what we call detoxification of this alcohol. They metabolize it uh, using, of course, various systems of enzymes like uh, cytochrome uh, P450 system with the other subfamilies of the isozymes like uh, for example, CY3A4, all those CYP3A4 uh, subfamilies, they help us in the metabolism of alcohol. The, 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 uh, uh, the alcohol, the, uh, for example, that system where even uh, alcohol dehydrogenase follows and uh, others the, uh, and others in the family of the microsomal uh, microsomal uh, enzyme oxidase system of the river, the males. You remember the males? The microsomal enzyme oxidase system uh, that participates in uh, the metabolism of uh, our alcohol. Uh, so, but let's not reach there. Let's now focus on our alcohol. Now, the moment alcohol has been metabolized, uh, a metabolite that is known as acetaldehyde is formed. Acetaldehyde is formed. As acetaldehyde is formed, of course, we say that a metabolite of alcohol has, has, has resulted, it has been formed. This acetaldehyde, as it is formed, following the metabolism of ethanol, following the metabolism of the spirits that we take, that we enjoy, it keeps on, of course, accumulating. So as it accumulates with the time, uh, it causes, uh, it induces the other carcinogenic effects on uh, uh, on the on the epithelial cells of the of the mouth or the oral cavity, uh, it induces it 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 imposes its uh, carcinogenic activities on uh, the epithelial linings of the esophagus or the garret. It imposes the same carcinogenic effects on the epithelial linings of the stomach, intestines, and the liver. Eventually, when you keep on abusing it with the time, without withdrawing it, without stopping, eventually, this chemical together with the others, they start actually transforming our body cells, the body cells which are found in the oral cavity epithelial linings, in the epithelial linings of palinix, palinix, in the epithelial linings of the esophagus or the esophagus, in the epithelial linings of the stomach walls, in the epithelial linings of the river, and the, uh, the epithelial linings of the stomach, even also uh, we, without forgetting the, the cells, the acina cells or the achina cells uh, of the pancreas. So eventually you hear that uh, the, the, this person, following many years of heavy alcohol drinking, Following many decades, maybe one and a half decades of heavy alcohol intake, you hear that, oh, he or she has been diagnosed with the, the carcinoma of the oral cavity, cancer of the oral cavity of the mouth, cancer of the esophagus, cancer of the stomach, cancer of the liver, hepatocellular carcinoma, cancer of the pancreas, cancer of the intestines, all those. So, the usually the main product, the major product that induces uh, that, uh, that disaster of all those cancers, that group of cancers, it is acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde has carcinogenic effects from today onwards. So, my dear colleagues, at this point, we can also look at uh, another uh, chemical or another carcinogen that induces uh, cancers uh, in uh, our body cells or in our bodies. So, the next is, we already know what acetaldehyde does. 
Now we can graduate to something else still and uh, our foods and drinks. And our foods and drinks. So I hope you can see we already have and our foods we already have again. Uh, we have uh, uh, chemicals. We are done with the alcohol. We are done with the aflatoxins. Allow me to, to keep on adding on. So uh, still we have uh, grilled meats. Grilled meats, grilled meats. You know, we all like, we all enjoy grilled meats, especially sausages. Uh, it can be beef, it can be chicken, it can be fish, all those, but we like grilling. What is grilling? Uh, we have, uh, of course, to those of you who studied home economics, you know what, what I'm talking about. Grilling of foods, grilling of meats. Uh, you, those of you studies, who studied foods and nutrition, you know what I'm talking about. And you know, okay, in simple terms, grilling refers to roasting of meat with the dry heat. With the dry heat, we get a wire mesh, we put it there, and then we, uh, you find that the heat can come from under the meat, heat can come from the sides of the meat, heat can come from above the meat, heating it directly still, any direction. So we know. So when you roast the meat, uh, we are when you roast the meat uh, uh, like that, we are uh, we are we are doing what using dry heat. We are doing what we call grilling. Now grilled meats, of course, they are very delicious. There's a certain aroma that it develops uh, that comes out from grilled meat, from like muchomo. Uh, so, so now let me show you something that happens. When we grill our meat and the heat, the temperatures reaches above uh, from 155 degrees Celsius to our about 260 degrees centigrade Celsius, uh, the meats that are being grilled, it can be beef, by the way, it can be pork. It can be, it can be beef, it can be fish, it can be chicken. You know, I feel like eating, I feel like chicken tonight. I feel like eating chicken. Chicken tonight, fish, beef, pork, all the other meats that we know, to mention but a few. Now, let's look here. When we grill our meats, of course, that dry heat can go as high as 260 degrees Celsius, even or even up to 300 degrees Celsius. Now, the moment meats are being grilled, roasted, using that dry heat, on that dry heat, it can be pork, it can be beef, it can be fish, it can be chicken. So when they reach these temperatures, especially from this, from above 150 degrees Celsius and above 150 degrees, they start raising what we call uh, nitrosamines. Nitrosamines. Or carcinogens known as are uh, known as nitrosamines are released. Nitrosamines are also carcinogens. So you can see carcinogens are released, and the name of these carcinogens is referred to as nitrosamines. Nitrosamines, from today onwards, you need to know that nitrosamines are carcinogens and they are implicated in the pathogenesis in the beginning of 
stomach cancer. Most stomach cancers result from uh, uh, nitrosamines. So nitrosamines give cause what? Stomach cancers. Stomach cancers, carcinoma, CA stomach, we say carcinoma of the stomach. Uh, uh, carcinoma of the stomach, I don't know, carcinoma of the stomach. So stomach cancers or gastric carcinoma. Stomach or, or gastric. Stomach or gastric carcinoma, nitrosamines. I hope we are aware. I also need to let you know at this point uh, that still these meats, uh, these nitrosamines are referred to as uh, heterocyclic, uh, they are in the family of uh, compounds called uh, nitrosamines are in the family of compounds that are called uh, poly, polycyclic polycyclic and the heterocyclic amines and the hydrocarbons. Okay, in simple terms, you can call nitrosamines uh, the member, the, the four under the member, the family, the member of compounds. Called the uh, 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 polycyclic amines, and the, then when we mention heterocyclic hydrocarbons, or say heterocyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, uh, still others uh, in, the, in the related family, like the benzopyrenes, they follow in this uh, uh, group of compounds. So from today onwards, when you are when when you, you are when you are enjoying muchomo, when you enjoy when you are enjoying your roasted meat. All the time roasted chicken. I want the other chicken from oven. I want chicken from the oven. I want the other grilled um, pork, grilled fish. All, all the time you go to enjoy that food, those meats. Because you all like them. I cannot deny, I personally enjoy them. They are delicious. But uh, as we think about the deliciousness, that umami taste, we should also think about uh, our health. We should also think about uh, uh, the possibility of uh, nitrosamines and the uh, eventual uh, carcinoma or cancer of any of these organs that I'm talking about. Uh, our nitrosamines cannot only induce gastric carcinoma, but also even uh, uh, carcinoma of the esophagus, of the agarit, carcinoma of even the oral cavity and the intestines, including the, even the liver. So, but the major cancers that are induced by, casino, by this, type, this group of carcinogens, uh, we have the stomach cancers, uh, or the gastric carcinoma, or the gastric